everyone. Dr. Brian Scott with you one more time. Uh, we are continuing our study on the insight to the end times. We're looking at how close we are to the very last days on this earth before the uh, tribulation period, before Jesus ascends the throne and uh, begins to rule on earth for a thousand years. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, where Paul wrote Timothy and said, in the last days, we're going to see perilous times come. Those perilous times will be exceedingly dangerous and exceedingly fierce. As we work our way down through these scriptures, we're seeing all kinds of different signs. Uh, the first four scriptures, uh, verses 2 through 5, indicate 19 different signs of these last days. Today, I want to look at uh, chapter 3, verse number 4 where it concludes with lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. This is sign number 18. Imagine 18 signs telling us where we are on God's timetable. Lovers of pleasure comes from the Greek term, a combination of philio meaning love and hedon meaning pleasure. Uh, the hedon word in the Greek gives us the, the English word hedon, hedonistic which means people who are unbridled, unrestrained, and they are solely devoted and dedicated to seeking pleasure for themselves. Um, lovers of pleasure means we're gonna spend our time trying to appease ourselves. Personal gratification is the highest thing in our life. It's the most important thing in our life. Everything else can go by the wayside, but we're gonna have a good time. And uh, you can see this throughout our society today. You see it in all the ads that you uh, hear on TV and see on TV and so on. It says lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It's interesting that it includes this reference to more than because it's a comparative statement and it means that um, they love pleasure more than they love God, but they do love God. So when you see this reference to lovers of pleasure and it's a combination of filio and hedon, which is uh, self-satisfaction and self-gratification, you automatically think we're talking about people who are not Christian or churchgoers. But the reference more than widens this net and indicates that most of these people already love God to some extent, but they love pleasure more than they love God. So that includes an awful lot of our church believers today. And that's where things get really dicey because we think we're exempt from this. But leisure, lovers of pleasure are focused on being happy. And you can't keep happiness on an ongoing basis. You have to keep replenishing it and keep doing the same things over and over again in order to experience this happiness. But a lover of God doesn't seek happiness. They seek to do what God wants them to do, to be obedient, and that results in joy. Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Paul warns us that this unending pleasure and this unending happiness and this unending self-gratification is going to usurp most church goers. And we've seen this in the years that we have been in ministry. We've seen that the numbers of people uh, who are attending services keeps decreasing and keeps decreasing and keeps decreasing because they're replacing the time they would spend coming to church with hedonistic or self-gratifying pleasures. And I could give you examples, but I don't want to uh, uh, brandish anybody uh, unnecessarily, but we're seeing people replace their church attendance with a lot of other things. The um, way that this really gets uh, messy is the fact that most, most churchgoers who are enjoying these pleasures will tell you that they're really committed to the Lord, but their actions tell us otherwise. Their actions tell us otherwise. Their actions reveal their priorities, and the seeking of pleasure certainly far exceeds their desire to serve God and be in the house of God. This is a statement that Paul made. He said, uh, we're going to see people who are heady. We're going to see people who are headstrong. We're going to see people who are haughty they'll end up becoming lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I hope that's not you. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to look at one more uh, sign from these verses. And then the last two days of this week, I'm going to answer questions for you. So I look forward to hearing you, seeing you. Uh, be online with us tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>